Right, let's get some calves weighed up, drenched and jabbed. 254. Ooh. Lucky last, weighed in at 252. Not bad. Two shots of that. Pour on. Rub it back like so. So that pour on is quite interesting stuff. It, uh, you pour it on the back and it kills all the external parasites and supposedly the internals. Not too sure how. Somehow it gets absorbed into the bloodstream and works that way. All I know is that it does work and that it is a hang of a lot easier than oral drenching. So before I go on the feed pad, good to do the externals and clean up the internals too. Right, just got to empty the gun out back into here. This stuff is not cheap. Fill that up with water and we'll be good to go. You know, guys, I've got to go. I've got to do in town tonight. We've got a, a, got a fortnightly spot on the local radio station, The Muster on Hokanui. Jump on Spotify, any of the other popular podcast things. Head along and have a look. It's all put up there every day. So, uh, yeah, be good for a listen. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow when we're getting the calves and those trees way up on top there. Oh, well, there's another 70 lambs away. Uh, you know, when you knew you were right about something, but you thought, nah, I can't be right about that. So you change your plans. And then it turns out you were right, and it's a little bit of a stuff up. Yeah, we're kind of in that scenario now. Got a bit of a sore head today. <laughs> a few too many drinks last night, but that's all right. Got to be done once, in, once every now and again. That is my problem right there. And this... Girls have had four days in here now. Um, probably could have got 12 out of it. We'll get 10, and they'll be a bit better fed, so I'm not too worried about it. But, yeah, there's still quite a bit of feed left in here. So, maybe I should have split this paddock in three. Not the end of the world. So the problem there is that when you're block grazing, break grazing, strip grazing, whatever you want to call it, a lot of people do one-day shifts, and I don't like one-day shifts because... As much as you know they're getting the right amount of feed every day, it creates a lot of stress, it can create a lot of mud, especially when it's wet, and it's just not a system I'm particularly fond of. But uh, when you get beyond four days in block feeding, they're just they're spending too much time not getting enough to eat. So the general rule with a, we'll say a four day break, the first two days they're getting more than enough, the third day they're getting enough, the fourth day they're probably not quite getting enough. But the balance for the four days is is more than enough so that's okay but as there's less and less grass available their intake goes down so if you take that out to a five or a six or a seven day then they just spend too much time not getting enough to eat and even though they've they've had too much for the first wee while you just wind up being really really inefficient with your feed so yeah it's a little bit of a stuff up but it's not really worth worrying about right now so anyway, we'll feed them some sheep nuts, and then we'll get those cattle and those treats. No bird's nests. Woohoo! That's quite the jet of water, eh? Crikey. Got that tank there full. This is now about 10 tonne trailer baleage and water. This little sucker, though. causing a few issues. Got a fuel issue because that's got a hole in it. Got a spark issue because this switch had packed up. Sheep must have given it a knock or something. But we had another spark issue which is so this is an imitation life end. So we've all heard of an imitation Honda that's a life end but uh, yeah this is an imitation one of them. Actually goes bloody good. That spark plug might have 40 50 hours on it I suppose. It didn't want to spark anymore. Had me hellish confused. You see, we had spark for like a couple of revolutions, and then there was just nothing. And I couldn't work out what was going on. Thought it was something to do with the, oh, what are they, an exciter or a magneto, whatever it is that's on them. Um, yeah. Then I put a bolt on it, and it sparked. And I went, you, I won't say that word. Yeah, so I went back, got another spark plug, away we went. 
but it did take a wee while to work out. Anyway, we'll go and get this load up the hill and get set up for this kettle. Our trailer's snaking a bit. Everyone's actually doing pretty well. We're on top here. Looks not flat. Now it is. Falling off a wee bit. She's only a wee baby, she's only 180 horse, so gotta go easy on her. And there we have it. Trough is filling up. So they're going to have this whole area here and around the other side of the trees is a wee bit. You can see that other post over there. It's got quite an area to cover. A few weeds in here. There's a wee bit of hemlock, but not much. Even nettles, they're okay. Not going to do any harm. They're fenced out of all the trees, so they can't actually get in and hurt the trees or hurt themselves on the trees, which is good. Yeah. They're on their way. At the moment we're still carting water up here. We may have had a little bit of a stuff up. The guys that come and design the scheme, they uh, there was a bit of a delay in getting back to me with the, <laughs> the pipe. The pipe came on special for the month and I went in and bought a lot, a kilometre of it. Um, so this scheme is to replace our existing one which just isn't big enough and it's old pipe and it's it's yeah it was put in pretty well but not perfectly it was pulled through the ground as opposed to being laid and it's just not up to the job so we're gonna put this new one in tanks going over there but yeah I went and bought a whole little pipe green line which is good for 6.3 bar of pressure and we're gonna have about 10 bar of pressure in the scheme yeah so not gonna be up to the job yeah so i've got some more ordered but i don't know how far away it is so right up until it gets here and then we get it in the ground i've got to use that trail or the tank on the back to cut water up here but i can bring bailage up at the same time so it's not a major just a wee bit niggly but it shouldn't be too much work over winter certainly should be less than uh shifting them on crop every day anyway and another lot of stall lambs away 